Hi and welcome back to our Dreamweaver tutorial. In the last video we went ahead and set up our rotating banner image on our page. And in this video we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the different options that you can change for um, this particular uh, banner slider. So I'm going to go ahead now and switch into Dreamweaver and we actually don't need to be um, in the template file to change most of the settings for this tool. There is one setting however that you should be aware of and that's the timeout setting right here and it's set for 3000. What that basically means is there's going to be three seconds three seconds in between each slide. Um, JavaScript always measures time in terms of uh, milliseconds, so 3,000 me basically means three seconds. And you can increase or decrease that depending on um, the speed that you want the slider to go at. What we're going to do now is go in and take a look at the slider.css file. And there are several options that you should be aware or several settings that you should be aware of here. And the first is in this first style here, slider. And you can see the width and the height is 900 by 300. And that needs to match the width and the height of the image that you're going to be rotating through. You know, in this case, I had a long rectangular shaped image. So it's 900 by 300. If I was doing this with a square image, it might be 450 by 450. If I wanted to rotate a tall image, I could do that as well. You don't see that very often, but um, you could do that. So 900 by 300 um, is simply the width and the height of your image. You have another width down here that's 900 and again that needs to be the width of the actual image that you're using um, in the slider. So those are several um, that you may need to change especially if you're working on your own um, custom project. Now the slider image span right here has the width and the height of the drop down caption box. So the height here needs to be how far you want that to drop down. And the width is how far you are, how wide you want the caption box to be. So you may have seen some caption boxes that are very long and very narrow as they drop down. And you just simply set the width and the height for that right here. Now, if you want to remove the caption box altogether, that actually is very simple. Let me show you a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this value to 200. And we'll go ahead now and refresh this page. And you can see it's now only coming down part of the way on my image. It's not covering it up entirely. But it's still 300 pixels wide. And you can adjust that again right here. But if you want the caption box not to be there at all, what you simply need to do is change the opacity here. And actually, this setting will allow you to change not only whether the box appears or not, but also it can make it more or less transparent. In this case, zero means it's invisible. One would mean that it's got total opacity or it's, it doesn't have any transparency. And you need to change all four of those settings. And the reason for that is um, this will be the setting that works with Mozilla Firefox. This is the setting that works with um, Apple Safari. This is the setting that works for most other browsers. 
and alpha here is the HTML5 version of that. But if you change all of those to zero and then save it and refresh your page, you're going to see your banner does its rotation, but now there's no drop down. And there are some other fairly self-explanatory um, items in here, like the padding that's around the box, the amount of space in between the edge of the box and your actual text, the font that you're going to use, the font size for your, for your text, the line height, the color of your text, um, and all those good, um, all those good things. If we scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see this here, and this is actually the font size and the font color for the title of your um, image. If I go ahead and undo that opacity change so that I can now see my slider. Again, remember you got font size 12 here and white is the color font size 22 and this orange is the color and let's come back in here and now you can see there's the heading and there's the actual text so it's in these settings that you change those there now there's also a very important setting right here and right here Basically what this does is it sets the upper left hand corner of the drop down box. So I've said that the drop down box, the top position should be zero. So it shouldn't start anywhere from the, it should start right at the top of the image, but it should be indented into the left by 600 pixels. And again, when we look at this, we can see ignore this space here we'll get to this in just a moment we can see the image and the upper left hand corner of this drop down is 600 pixels to the left but zero pixels down from the top if i was to change that let's say to 500 pixels or 400 pixels and then come back in here you can see the drop down box appears over a little bit more so you can change the top and the left here and you can also change where the lower left hand corner is and or the uh, lower uh, left hand corner is right there as well so we'll save that now one final thing that I want to look at as far as this goes is this space right over here and you can see in our original we don't have that and this is basically just caused because when we look at the and actually it's kind of self-explanatory when you look at the actual HTML for our slider there's our slider these are in list items list items are indented in a certain amount so we simply need to take off the indentation or make sure that the margin and padding is set for zero and the closest ID to these list items is actually the one that's been placed on the UL tag and it's slider content and if we go back into slider.css and look for slider content We'll see that right there. And in this case, I'm going to change this from margin dash left just to margin zero. And padding is also going to be set to zero. We'll save that. And let's take a look when we refresh this. Now you can see the image is flush over to the left. So those are just some of the more common options that you're going to want to be aware of when working with this banner slider. Um, there are a lot of other settings you can go in and play with, see how they affect um, 
the uh, the performance and the way the banner slider uh, looks. One of the best ways to learn um, about web design in general is to um, go in and play with things, change things, see how your changes affect things. Um, and especially in a learning exercise like this, um, what you can simply do is copy your folder somewhere to somewhere else, then go into your original and tear it apart, make whatever changes you want, knowing that you can always go back to that copied version um, and have everything set correctly. And actually, I want to change this back to dropping all the way down the um, image. So I'm going to come back in here to my um, settings and I'm going to reset the height of that to being 300. And let's just always check that. There we go. And let's go ahead and just for fun, let's go ahead and test this in Firefox. Actually, let's go ahead and start with Opera here, Internet Explorer here. And what a shock, Internet Explorer is not working to display this DWT file. And if you have that problem with Internet Explorer um, showing you a DWT file, you can go into Windows and change that setting or just open your index.html file and try opening it up that way and you should see the results. One thing you are going to notice with Internet Explorer um, and I have actually haven't timed this out but you will notice that it appears that the effect is a little bit quicker than with other browsers um, and, I, and basically you just need to play with that timeout setting. And let's go ahead and test this inside of Firefox as well, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. And here we are in Firefox, and my transitions are working correctly. So that's all you need to do to set up your banner slider for your page. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and move on and do the contact page. And we're not going to do this entire fancy form here. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a simple contact form um, with just a few fields inside of it. And later on, we'll learn how to do more complex things with forms. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to put a simple contact form on your page. So I'll see you in that video.